Hi, I will now explain to you uh, something here about the twin paradox. So the twin paradox is the this thing in relativity where you know one twin stays uh, supposedly and another twin uh, travels away and meets the guy back, right? Now if you think about it, you know at constant velocity anybody moving you know there's no such a thing as staying and moving etc right everybody is equivalent but the, what makes this uh, work out is basically that one of the twins just moves inertially and the other one accelerates okay because he moves you know one stays inertial but then the other one is inertial let's say for a while if you want to you know make it as simple as possible and then uh, he turns you know here in the we have a, a, a very sharp corner in reality you know a turn is a perhaps smoother but anyways uh, idealized uh, so the guy goes and comes back so the so basically the traveling twin is an accelerated twin now uh, here's the picture here's a space-time diagram okay the vertical direction is time the horizontal direction right here is space right and now this 45 degree line right here okay is is uh, the the history of a light ray you know there's the world line of a photon okay and and now the idea is the following that time you look at time for this twin that just stays this is the the history this is the world line of a twin supposedly the one that we you know use the words uh, he stays right all right and supposedly the other guy now will have a history like this he moves along this trajectory then he comes back okay not on the photon trajectory but in this uh, less uh, slope trajectory right here he comes back and when he meets with his twin less time will have passed for him now the thing is this uh, time passage here is is given by by um, basically arc length or in other words the length the Lorentz length of this vector right here is the passage of time for that observer and then the length of this vector right here is the passage of time for this observer okay and you know there's two copies there's one going this way and another one going going that way but those two vectors you know by symmetry ought to have the same length okay so what happens here you notice something though in the in the geometry in this Lorentz geometry of space-time if you look at vectors of constant length they form this hyperbola right here okay that uh, curvy shape right there that I did it with a dotted line all right and so those are all the vectors that have the same Lorentz length and as you notice already this vector right here from this point down to here right and this one right here from here all the way to do 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 until you get to that to that curve right have the same length so therefore this one right here just from here up to here is shorter than this one from here to here so visually you can already tell right that that uh, this vector right here is shorter than this one and since the passage of time for this guy is twice the length of this vector and the passage of time for the guy that does has this history it's basically twice the length of this vector you notice that the guy that travels this history has less time passing from the time that he first met the other guy till the time that he met up with him again and that's you know that's it for that now I saw on uh, on PBS uh, space time that they were talking about now um, a cylinder type uh, space-time right uh, basically what is it they call the topologically closed uh, space-time or something like that but in in particular to be precise a cylinder in this case so um, what happens there well now here is the world line 
of the twin who stays so to speak or, or the you know inertial twin you can call it better one inertial twin and a non inertial uh, twin uh, an accelerated twin so so then here again is the world line of a photon right and then what happens is this these two ends now of the space time again this vertical direction is time are to be glued together so this thing is is to make a, a a cylinder so you glue this side to this side and you make a cylinder okay so what happens well this guy he stays there the other guy he goes away and eventually he lands here but landing here is the same thing as landing here right because those two sides are glued so um, you know, so so basically, without without this time around now, without accelerating actually, because this uh, apparently this twin right here never accelerates. So now this unaccelerated twin though meets up again with this guy right here, the guy who stays so to speak. So now they're both uh, inertial, right? All right. Um, so the question is this, right? Who, uh, you know, who ages less? Well, again, but what we said before, like the same argument as the previous thing with a hyperboloid, right? You get this vector from here to here. You draw the hyperboloid, which goes up like this, and you see that this vector is actually longer than this one, and since again. The, the length of those vectors represents the passage of time for those guys then you notice that this guy has aged less by the time he meets up with this guy